Good afternoon, July 15th, 2021. I just wanted to show a little method that I use from time to time, and it prevents a lot of havoc often. Oh, we got a visitor here again. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you these, <laughs> these bugs. Spotted lantern flies is their name, but they've got me concerned. I've talked about them before. We'll talk about them later. I have to find a solution because there's quite a few of them on my figs. This is my this is my black Madeira, and uh, I recently mentioned it in a video. This time I'm mentioning it and Figo Preto. Some of my favorite varieties, Figo Preto, and that's a beautiful Figo Preto. I haven't featured that very much, but it's very big. As you can see, it's a beauty and it's loaded with fruit. And the fruit is just delicious. They're very close, very, very close. Many say they're exactly the same. Uh, <laughs> I, I try to avoid controversy where I can. <clears throat> On the other hand, I'm pretty outspoken, aren't I? And uh, there's some, I think there's some slight differences in the way they they grow. Uh, and some other little differences I've spoken about in previous videos, I'm not going to go into it. Uh, but they're close enough that if you have one, you don't really have to bother too much to get the other, I think. Some people may agree with that and some others not. But save yourself the expense. They're both great. I love them both. There's a little bit of difference, but not enough for you to have both if you only have room for one or can only afford one. They both are, mine are just vigorous growers, They're beautiful, and without a disease, without, just perfect. I can't complain. I have another black Madara over here that's very fruitful and uh, very, very healthy. Also, um, and I've got a few of them growing, you know, there we go. And uh, you can see it's just, it's, it's a beautiful tree. I don't have any problems with virus, big mosaic virus or any of the other things that we hear about from time to time. But let me talk about this concept because you may eventually want to use this concept and I want to explain it to you. Now you see these chairs. These are just some old chairs I had laying around, outside chairs. And I wanted to erect my figs. And you might wonder, well, why would you do that? Well, for one thing, they're big trees. And they, and when they're big, I, I like when they get big because they're just loaded with fruit. Look at that. Please look at that. Just loaded with fruit. Okay, I love it. They're high off the ground or away from the moisture. You know, it's there's so many benefits to being up there. <laughs> really, there are. But they're so uh, uh, plentiful. And their production of delicious figs. Look, look at all that, these figs. You know, and I, I tell you, how do you, you know, how do you deny the fact that the top of the tree is often the very, very best place to produce fruit? So I like to get my figs growing pretty nicely. But when that happens, okay, and they're still in containers. Now, why are these still in containers? And they're not in using my, my ground bag method. Or they're not in the ground entirely. And here I am in 7A. It's cold here. Uh, we have to wrap our figs usually. We get away with it. We get away with murder from time to time. Last year we got away with murder and we didn't wrap all of our figs. And we live to tell about it. <laughs> but next year it might be severely cold and go down to 5 degrees or 3 degrees or 0 here. And they'll all be killed that aren't wrapped. So I'm going to wrap my very best. And of course these stay in containers because they are what they are. They are among my very best varieties. Figo Preto, Black Madeira, that cannot be grown in the ground. And I, I would not try to grow them in grow bags in the ground. They're just too valuable. Uh, Smith, here's a beautiful Smith. I don't know if you can see that. But, and this one is Genovese Nero, which I've mentioned before. And I think that Genovese Nero really is very, very close, if not identical to Italian 258. And I've mentioned that in several videos. Here are some beautiful, huge Breba. 
Look at that. Aren't they beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful. And that one's going to be right. It's been raining here a lot. So I've got, there's one. Look at all that fruit. A bundle of fruit. Look at it. There's a, a, a Breba. Let's see. Uh, Genevieve's Nero. And it's cracked open from all the rain. <laughs> a couple of ants on there. Plus the fact that uh, I've, uh, oh, wow. Ooh, man, that looks good. Plus the fact that I've been watering them, and I forgot not to water this one <laughs> recently um, with all the rain we've been getting. But, hey, it's cracked, but it's, it looks beautiful. Uh, should I? I guess. Gosh. This is the hard part of the job, you know. But I, I guess I need to take a bite of this. Look how beautiful that is, though. Isn't that Genovese Nero, which, again, 258, Italian 250. I think, for what it's worth, for what it's worth, my opinion. Okay, here we go. I wouldn't fib to you out there. That is worth its weight in gold. That is delicious. That That is, <laughs> oh my God, that is really good. That's really, 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 really good. Really good, and it tastes exactly like Italian 258, which is really, 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 really good. And the only Breba, as I have mentioned, that I feel rivals the very best Breba all around because of the abundance of its production and for a lot of other reasons. Uh, Peter's Honey, I think, is the very most delicious Breba that I've ever tasted. And the most valuable, given the fact that there are so many more of them than just a, you know, a few here and there. That you get with uh, Genovese Nero or Italian 258. And as you know, you don't get many Breba on Preto or Preto, Fico Preto or Black Madeira. But uh, let me get back to this concept. Now, I've got, I've got rebarb, epoxy coated rebarb in the ground. I've got a rope going around, lacing them all together. I want you to see this. Okay. You might think, well, that's a lot to bother. No, it's not. Because when you have valuable figs like this and you want them to stay out on the ground in the sun so that the enzymes and the compounds that make the fruit delicious and tasty and spectacular get to the trees, but you don't want them to get whipped around in the, in the, in the wind. You don't want your, for instance, look at these air layers. You don't want them to be broken off in the wind. So I've got them secured. I've got them tied. I've got them tied to the rebar. I've got the rebar pounded in the ground. I've got the rebar uh, tied to the chair. You see that? You can see it, okay? And that's what I did all around here. And they're all tied together. And they even have a, a string, a heavy string, a twine that that connects them all together on the top. So that they can only bend. You know, a tree can withstand a tremendous gale. It is very flexible. It's a wonderful, wonderful tree. It's it's durable, etc., etc. But hey, give it some help. You know, you're the grower. It's the tree. It can't walk around and do things for itself. You've got to do it. You know, it's work. So do some cool things, you know? You know, you, you've got to meet the challenges that are presented to you, when they're presented to you. And so I have this tree now all laced together, okay? And it's getting support from, they are getting support from one another. And they're getting support from the rebarb that are here and there. And smaller rebarbs that are pounded in down here and down here into the chair so that nothing can blow this over. No gale is going to turn this over. None. It's not going to happen. And look at all the fruit. They like growing together. They like each other. They're figs. Okay? And they're going to produce an abundance, a huge amount of fruit. Just look. You can see it. Look at it. Look at all the fruit. Okay. Now, what is another advantage of this? Okay? Not only will they stay there and put stay put. I've got little trays under them so that I can monitor the water. I know when there's too much water. I know when there's not enough. I can regulate all that real nicely. And when the birds start to attack, guess what? See? You just get the net out. This real fine net made by E.I. DuPont, I believe. This bird net. And they don't like it. The birds don't like this net. And you drape it over it. Look how easy it is now. Now, I've got another variety I'm going to show you. I'm going to add to this uh, collage of, of figs. 
and uh, another large two Italian 258. And I'll be able to very easily take this 14 by 14 foot net and drape it over this whole assembly of figs. It's going to be an easy thing to do. You know how difficult that is when you only have, like, you have one fig over there and a fig somewhere else. I mean, you got to use all these nets. Come on. It's not even practical. Practical, practical, practical. You've got to be a practical grower. Common sense. You have to. You have to employ. You have to execute plans that make growing figs more productive and practical for you. You have to protect your fig trees. And this is cool. Now, next in the fall, or maybe in the spring, I'm going to be cutting a lot of these. There's going to, they're going to make a lot of cuttings. And I'm going to cut them back down. Of course, uh, my black Madeira, I'm going to take these branches away because they're going to be little trees, baby trees, baby black Madeira trees. I love them. Okay. And so they won't be as tall next year, but still I'm going to have to put rebarb and protect them from the birds. So they like these. Now these are smaller trees, not quite as large as those. But these are wonderful black Madeira, as I just showed you. These are all great, my, my very favorite um, varieties. This is long yellow, not yellow long neck, long yellow. This is another beautiful, very productive Smith tree. Look at all the figs on this. Look at that. And this is Smith right there. Beautiful Smith tree. And this over here is Italian 258. I made a video the other day and there was a, a Breba on there, a small Breba, because this is just a baby, baby uh, 258. <coughs> but it's protected here. It's tied in. The chair's tied in. It's not going to go anywhere. They're not going to go anywhere. They're all together. They're protected. You see the rebarb? Look at that. You see? It's all connected. By the way, tie your figs up a lot. You know, I... I prune my figs out and then I tie them together. Maybe I, I could walk over here very quickly and show you what I mean. But I'm always tying up my trees and um, not to get off the subject, maybe I'll just stay here and next time I'll show you how I tie my trees with twine all the time and to teach them, train them how to grow at a certain shape and that's how I do it. And it's the same like with tomatoes, you know, you, you, you put tomato poles and don't you tie them up? And don't you put little poles around your peppers like I do? I do. Okay, well, I do the same thing with figs. Okay, and even when they're in the ground, I cut out the branches I don't want. I thin them out, let the sun come in. I only choose the fruiting branches. I get rid of anything that's shading another thing. One branch that's shading another branch. And I, I, I tie them with rope to get them to, sh to grow the way I want, to shape the branches. Sometimes I bend the branches quite a bit to get them to form you know, to grow and and become fixated in the direction that I want them to. Now, what was I talking about? Italian 258. Here's another one I'm going to add to what I just named, dubbed, I guess, to co my collage of figs. But I've got these. Now, see, these are tied in. Look at this. These are in my greenhouse still. But they're not. They're, they're out a window, <laughs> and they're getting the uh, most of the afternoon sun which is acclimating them to the sun. And they've been here for a long time and they're full of fruit. There's a lot of 258s in here. There's just a lot of fruit. I can't wait. Okay, I love Italian 258s, one of my favorites. It's a big tree. Okay, a very big tree, as you can see. And I'm going to probably move this out because it's already acclimated. As you can see, it's getting sun. Look at, look at the shadow. See, it's getting sun all the time in the afternoon. So I can move this now. The enzymes are flowing. The compounds are flowing that really enhanced the flavor of the figs. And I'm going to move this out to the collage and tie it into one of those rebarbs into one of those chairs and the rest of the trees so that it stays out there the remainder of the summer. Okay? Now, let's go down over here. I just want to, these, these, these figs are going to be offended. My beautiful Rondi Bardos, they get the morning sun hanging out the side of the greenhouse because I have the panels off. And these are my Rondi Bardos. I have more Rondi Bardos. Uh, in, in the ground, two of them in the ground here on this property, one on another property, and I've got other uh, Rondi Bardos in containers too. But these are pretty well-established 
very fruitful Rondi Bordeaux is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite varieties that I have sung the praises of many, many times. And I will always, because they just never fail me. They always produce an abundance of delicious fruit. One of my all-time favorites, good in the ground, good in a pot. In 7A, better in a pot, actually, than in the ground, I think. Not by much. Now, that might be a controversial statement head on the chopping block, but not really, because that's my opinion, and I have the experience to back that opinion up. My personal experience is that it's not as winter hardy as many will have you think. It is not. It is winter hardy, but not as. It takes a beating, even if it's covered. And so you can get away with it. Now, 7B, you, you're good. You're good. But 7A, even if you cover it, it, it takes a beating, but it's still a good productive trait. I just made a video, and I I released it, or I'm going to release it very shortly. A couple days ago, I don't know, what, July 12th or something, but I, I haven't released it yet, where I show you two of my Rondi Bordeaux in the ground, and they're, they have lots of fruit, they look great, but I can tell you they take a beating in, in, with the winter time, okay? And they, and they don't in a container. And my Rondi Bordeaux, okay, do very well in containers, and they are one of the few really best figs I think that I've ever grown that also tastes really really delicious after being grown in containers it's it's amazing because some trees just don't they don't taste good grown into me in, in the like Desert King is horrible in a container Peter's honey I don't like it it's not very good at all in a container but in ground those trees really excel Okay, but Rondi Bordeaux can, in the ground or in containers, it can be grown, uh, and you will enjoy it, you will love it, it's reliable, dependable, and everything about it is just good, okay? Maybe it doesn't taste as exquisite as a Italian 258 in perfection, or Black Madeira, but, or Smith, those three have very, very exquisite tastes, and they are very abundant producers, too. Remember, don't worry about taste. If you don't get figs, forget about it. Who cares? You're going to do all that work for what? A dozen figs? I mean, you want you want figs, figs. You know, that's my theme, figs. Like this, figs, figs, okay? And so, yeah, Italian 58, 258, okay. It, it makes a lot of figs. Uh, Black Madeira, it does. Smith, it does. So that's fine. But another fig variety, that let's say, that has a really, really good taste, if you're only going to get a dozen or so and they're late, forget about it. Just forget about it. Grow Rondi Bordeaux, because it's almost as good as those three. It's right up there. Maybe not quite, but you hardly can tell the difference. And it makes lots and lots of figs earlier, much, much earlier than those three I just mentioned. And it tastes delicious in a pot. And by the way, so does Italian 258, so does Black Madeira, and so does Smith. They all taste good in a pot. Don't ask me why, I don't know. Nature's secrets. Nature guards its secrets. I can't answer that question. I don't think anybody can. Okay, so I'm going to stop this. Well, I got one big Smith you might want to see in the ground. I love Smith. I guess I could walk over here and just show these real, real quick. I've got to end this video. And uh, over here I have a, another, which I have not featured, not this year. I have another Mount Etna type. Uh, this this is a work. This is just a, a little a work, a medium, and it's got a lot of figs on it too. And I showed you an a work in another video recently. You'll see it. And here's a uh, hardy Chicago type, Mount Etna type, which has a, a great abundance of fruit on it too. Okay, it's yielding a huge amount of fruit everywhere you look. It's just got fruit, 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 fruit. That's why I like this. And this tree, I very often make cuttings and give to my friends. And my relatives because it's so reliable and dependable i don't know exactly what it is it's a mount etna type a hardy chicago type but it's a very very good tree a tasty tree a prolific tree very 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 winter hardy tree fully in the ground it doesn't make a lot of breba like that one right there and it's a little bit later than the other trees on its breba production uh i mentioned earlier in another video that mavrasica uh, it makes more, far more uh, tasty Breva, and it's also a Mount Etna type, and a huge uh, main crop tr uh, too. Uh, they're all a little bit different, these variants, and I spoke about that in another video more, so I'll just shoot over to here. Uh, 
this this tree is also a prolific producer of fruit this is Pataglia green and it's growing in a grow bag in the ground just like the video I'm um, just like the, the um, Smith that I'm going to show you now this is Smith I've featured this before last year and uh, several other times when it was in the greenhouse look at all those little devils oh look at them they got me concerned they gave me the creep look if you you know what you know what about these bugs these spotted lantern what oh what the heck oh there's a big one that one man he that one must be the the parent or what it gets me about I was just gonna say you go around here and they go around the other side they're like a squirrel did you ever do any squirrel hunting when you were a kid but you know like you go on one side and the squirrel runs to the other side of the tree that's what these bugs do. Let me see if I can trick them. There you go. Look at that. There's an adult. Spotted lanternfly. And there's the larva, which are growing larger every day. And they've got me concerned. L let me get back on track. This is my smith. And this smith is growing in a grow bag. It's a big tree. It's, it was in the greenhouse. I featured it before. It's always produced abundantly. Look at these clusters of figs. Look at them. Look at everywhere. Every, every tree branch. And there's a lot of tree branches. And there's a lot of figs. Am I excited? You darn right I'm excited. I love Smith. I love my trees. Look at that. Okay. So you can see that this is a very, very productive tree. And this one is going to ripen. Now last year I had a lot of rain when they were getting ripe. I still got plenty of good figs, but some of them were spoiled. And I, you know, and yeah, okay, I'm a grown man. And I fell down on my knees and I cried. Okay, so I did. Not really, but you get the point. But <laughs> this year, I'm hoping that that's not going to happen. It's the luck of the draw. And I'm hoping that I'm going to have some really, really hot, dry weather when they all start getting ripe. And so, wish me luck with that. Thank you very much for viewing. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed this video. Good day.